Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and Wild Hearts. With the release of the game we have 8 weapons to choose between and that can be a pretty hard choice for anyone who's not absolutely certain. So today I've put together this video where we look at each weapon, their concept, how they work and help you make a more informed choice. For much more in depth guides on each weapon though, we are releasing videos on exactly that which you can go check out once you know which weapon you want to play. So with that said, let's begin with my main weapon, the Claw Blade. The Claw Blades are the most agile and evasive weapon in the game, allowing for the ridiculous on-target movement, all thanks to the claw and how it attaches to a specific point. That allows you to cleanly move through the air while attached, dragging yourself in for a burst on target damage via powerful vertical spins, or through the target using horizontal spins. Much like we're using 3D maneuver gear in Attack on Titan, we zip in and out, breaking the kimono down bit by bit while it can never retaliate, until eventually we use that ultimate move, dealing enough damage while attached to then dash in and through the target, exploding the claw mark in big damage. It feels and looks amazing but mechanically provides an impressively safe environment for you to time an attack and dash in, damage some breakable parts and burst the kimono down. It's honestly a very mechanically simple weapon. We have a light attack combo in the ground or one while we're in the air. Our heavy is a dash backwards or a dash forward which can be used to infinitely combo in unison. When we build up the gauge we're ready to go with the claw and from there we've got all that aerial movement and all those options whatever we need to do. This weapon wants to constantly be landing blows and even the smallest punish windows, much like the Jewel Blades of Monster Hunter if you're familiar with those. So these could be a good pick in that case. But if you want to fly around in the air and pretend you're Captain Levi, then this is absolutely the weapon for you. Next then, we have the Karakuri Katana, a transforming blade that has you unleash a green whip-like weapon, dealing doubled up damage with much increased range of attack as well. This weapon's basis is around extreme bursts of damage from massive combos, be they short-lived or the longer unshi slash combo. However, it more than has the potential to land one massive blow in an attack thanks to the unbound triple cart plunge attack. As the beginner weapon though, we all must play this weapon through the tutorial section. Things get really interesting as you learn the combo skips though, which we should talk about. As part of your special combo, you're able to do this crazy multiple hit combo, the Twin Blade Slash Storm. But having to do this long thrust beforehand every time can be really awkward. Instead, you can just do something like a light attack and then immediately go into the Blade Slash Storm and then you can just keep doing it for a big burst of damage. There's the heavy attack combo which has you unsheath attacks in combination over and over and over for great DPS, the best DPS you can do with this weapon. But it takes a while to get that going. From unsheath and unbound, you can immediately go into that unsheath combo combo and get way more damage way faster. As you can see then, using the right combo or combo skip at the right time is vital, whether you need a quick burst of damage or you want to go all in, or simply you need to evade an attack at the same time. I find the katana very fun to play and easy to pick up and learn, so I would really recommend it while you're learning the game itself. Next up then, how do things fare in the ranged world of Wild Hearts, starting with the bow here. The bow is a two stance weapon. While drawn, you can see that I'm holding it in a horizontal way, or I can swap stance to go into a vertical way, and these two affect the way that you deal damage and are very important. For example, I must charge my shots for maximum damage in that vertical stance, whereas in the horizontal stance, my shots deal a lot less damage but require no charging and also leave an arrow in the target, as you can see. When we swap back to that vertical stance and shoot, you can see that those arrows that were lodged now expend, exploding in damage. So in real world combat, in an actual fight against a kimono, you can see how I'm working constantly to build and spend by lodging as many as those quick smaller arrows in the target as possible, hopefully on a weak point like an arm, a head, or maybe a tail or other breakable parts, and then expending them with a powerful charged shot. But jumping back to training, you can see that we can actually bolster our abilities to unlock new attacks. So in vertical stance, I can bolster not once, but twice to get the max power in vertical, and I'll sit down and fire two arrows at once, piercing the target and dealing much more damage, almost like a dragon piercer if you've played Monster Hunter and a bow. Whereas bolstering twice in the horizontal stance, that gives us a sort of arc shot, allowing us to spread many of those small arrows based on how much stamina we have. That could be good for hard to reach breakable parts. The bow also features its own unique evasion where we're dashing quite far using our stamina there to evade and attack at the same time which is obviously very important. In play then the bow is a satisfying mix of building and spending, bursting damage and enjoying some medium to even long range shots for a potential safer playstyle in those scenarios. Of course fighting up close with a ranged weapon is still going to happen often and it'll be up to you to make the most of your Karakuri to keep you alive and keep you agile. 
Moving forward, it's now time to talk about the bladed Wagaser, aka the Umbrella. Because, yep, there's an Umbrella that's just a weapon. Long Sword Monster Hunter players, this should interest you because this is indeed the parry-focused weapon of Wild Heart. By suddenly whipping your Umbrella around, that can completely counter an attack. An incredible option to avoid damage, that's for sure, but it has multiple counter-attack options when you land one. Plus, when you land a parry, you'll boost your gauge at the bottom left, which builds as you attack and counter, leading to better damage, just like the different levels of Long Sword in Monster Hunter. The three Three levels of blue, yellow, and red will improve your output more and more, but don't forget, this is still an umbrella, so obviously that means you can basically fly and hover in the air, don't worry about it. Through that though, we have a lot of aerial movement, giving us ways to dash in and out of battle, very thrust-based, while also being able to parry mid-air. Allowing for smooth use of long combos from sky or ground, or while mixing the two, never letting up as we counter any incoming blow. This is a great weapon for someone confident in their ability to understand enemy patterns and timings, but will be a tougher one to learn the game with while you aren't as familiar with the current kimono. It is a very strong weapon pick though, when you're great at landing those counters, and well worth learning if you're up for the challenge. Now it's time to talk about our other ranged weapon of Wild Hearts, the hand cannon here. Although this looks more like a full body cannon to me, and yeah, this thing is heavy. While it is indeed a ranged weapon, it functions best in the medium or even close range, letting you blast the kimono while in that effective range, and those blasts can be insanely damaging though, well worth the risk. Each hit deals solid damage on a slower fire rate normally, but then there's things like the terrifying mortar style shots, or the channeled super beam blast when fully powered up. This thing requires a bit of setup and careful play Play, but the DPS potential is very high. As you can see, as I just do my normal shots, I'm spending my gauge here while building a second one, that being the heat gauge. We want to heat up the weapon so that we can use some of those more powerful attacks like so, and you can see the weapon is reflecting that. But if I were to keep going, not manage my resources correctly, I'd run out of the ability to fire, I'd overheat, and that's not good. To help with that, the cannon has an important ability to place a key base here, which basically regenerates our gauge quickly while we stand in it. So you can see I can infinitely infinitely fire as long as I don't overheat because of that buff we placed. When we are heated up though, we can fire those incredible mortar shots for big damage, as well as enhancing a new key base which will drop down right on top of me with that red outline. Fighting within this enhanced zone is great, but what you can actually do is pull it back into your weapon directly, which will then empower the cannon to do that super move, the laser shot, by firing exactly that straight into the kimono. Dealing great damage and obviously taking a little bit of a channel to work, but well worth the effort. So between its simple but effective mix of spending gauge to heat up, dropping its mortar shots on a downed kimono, or setting up those key bases and unleashing the laser, you want to maximize your resources effectively while moving a bit heavily. This is a comparable weapon to the heavy bowgun of Monster Hunter then, and should be surely one to consider if you're a fan of that weapon type. Next up, we have the Karakuri Staff, which is potentially one of the most unique weapons you'll find in this game. It is another transforming weapon, but one that kind of leans into that concept the most out of all of them. Beginning as sort of a staff, which you can use like a bow staff, you can immediately transform this into another weapon. Here we have almost dual blade weapons, which have their own attack patterns and options, and then we can transform again. Now what do we have? A giant shuriken, which you can use at melee range or throw, and then we can transform again. Now we have a spear, at which point we have now seen all of the base transformations and then there's the super transformation which as Josh was gushing about is basically like an ultra great sword which you can deal massive damage in single hits with in combination and use with your Karakuri. When we just look at like some standard gameplay it might look a bit overwhelming. Every weapon has its own charge attacks or combos or aerials or Karakuri attacks but it all ultimately leads to using that ultra sword that ultra great sword as sort of a final finishing big hitting move. If we jump back to the tutorial now, I can explain how this is not that complicated. Each weapon basically has a light attack combo, which is not too complicated, and a heavy attack, which depends on what weapon you're using. So with the bow staff, it's that kind of jump and slam down. If I press the special button, which is RT or R2 on a controller, we get a different weapon. I've been given the dual blades, but that isn't something I've selected intentionally. It just transformed, and now I have these. So now I have these, I'm like, okay, well, this is my light attack combo with the dual blades, not over complex. And this is my special with the dual blades, a sort of gap closer. You'll notice when I do these attacks that I glow for a moment. If I use my transform button when I'm glowing, I will change weapon and gain one level of gauge, one notch down there. So by doing the different attacks and then pressing the special button as that glow occurs, I can continue to transform over and over, landing combo into combo into combo. And eventually the gauge will turn yellow. At that point, that's when I can use that super sword and do my biggest hits. 
When it's full, the color changes and we can do the full triple part of the combo. The first hit, the second hit, and then finally the third hit, which is the most damaging move and the most damaging move in the entire game. And of course we can use the Karakuri and still use the Ultra Sword while doing that for a bit of mobility while also actually using that incredible attack. So with the spring, that can be a great gap closer and a big sudden hit with that. And of course we can use the crate jump for even bigger hits. So in essence, you have five weapons in one, one of them being the Ultra Sword that you build all of your gauge and bar for and then spend it on. The rest you will kind of randomly swap between and make the most of their unique movesets, which are basically light attack combos and one heavy attack, keeping it pretty simple as long as you understand which does which. After a small amount of practice on a training dummy, I'm sure you get this. So if this unique transformation playstyle engages and interests you, I would really recommend it. It's not as complicated as it first looks. Moving on to our next weapon then, it's finally time to talk about the Nodachi, which if you played Monster Hunter and you played Great Sword, you should be very familiar with this concept. Quick uncharged hits for reasonable damage in small punish windows, and then full charges to unleash hell when timed correctly and aimed well. The thing is, in this version of this style of weapon, you can actually move and charge at the same time. While the charging will of course be slower, and you've got to deal with stamina drain, you can get a bit of movement out while charging, which is a really nice little utility. In this game, we have Karakuri, so you could use a spring to move and charge at the same time and even unleash moving aerial attacks while fully charged. Is a really cool take on that greatsword charging style of gameplay. One that Josh has been really enjoying and you'll see a lot in the Probe series. While in concept it is simplistic charge attacks and then let them fly, the mechanics and actually applying that in a real fight, it's far from easy. So I'd really recommend Josh's full guide on this weapon as it is his main weapon that's on the channel right now. Last but not least then is our last weapon of this video. It is the Maul, which in this case looks like a barrel and a stick. If we take a look at some gameplay from Cotton, our Maul main, you can see that this is a very slow but very heavy hitting weapon. And at first you might think, oh, well, this is quite similar to the Nodachi. We charge up attacks and get big numbers. Well, no, the gameplay is actually very rhythmical because you must time special attacks at the right moment because if you press it too early, too late, it won't work. This will then extend the grip of the Maul all, allowing for bigger swings, heavier hits, and further combos. The combos weave into each other very well, and it's quite a yeah rhythmical, engaging playstyle with big numbers as your reward. If you're a fan of the hammer or the hunting horn in Monster Hunter, this could be a great option for you. Not to forget, the damage you can deal is pretty insane. If I just jump into some quick gameplay, I can show you how it works. When I attack, the maul will light up for a moment. That's the moment I have to press the special button, and then it will extend the combo. So if I attack, and then press at the right time, I can choose which attack follow-up happens, then choose to keep going, and there we have the massive downward slam. The timing is pretty brutal though, because it's very easy to mistime it. For example, if I'm spamming that special button, it won't allow it, it must be used at the right time. So rhythmical players, this really is the weapon for you. Cotton is maining the weapon though and has some great footage through the Probe series as well as a complete guide on this weapon and how to best make use of it. So I'd really recommend you check that out if you're interested in the weapon. But there you have it, my overview and look at all of the weapons of Wild Hearts. There are some seriously fun and unique playstyles here with these weapons. And while some of them have obviously taken inspiration from Monster Hunter, it is nice to see how they've changed things, adding their own little effects, or even quality of life changes like the ability to move and charge the Nodachi. I'd encourage you to give a few of them a try that you think you're interested in, because while it's always a good idea to have a main weapon while you progress the story, so much fun in these games is actually trying all the different weapons and getting used to how they work. If this video has been interesting or useful to you though, please do drop a like to support it. And as I mentioned, we have full guides on the weapons and how best to make use of them to check out on the channel already or in the coming days. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye